Hey there everybody, Joe here. Thanks for tuning in again. So I'm going to continue on Zoe's bedroom mural here. Okay, my picture's really starting to come together now. Uh, I, I'm imagining a lot, of, a lot of things I would like to do to improve it already. And the, something I'm seeing right now is that I would really like the way, what it would do for the perspective to put some middle ground trees right in the middle of this meadow. Uh, because then I have this this big tree, and if if I have something in between this size and these tiny sizes, I know that that's going to make my perspective better because you'll you'll see that graduation of of uh, you know getting further and further rather than just being one sudden change. So that's what I'm going to do right now, and, and I'm just going to do a real simple. I took a break here, so I got all the all the lids on my paint. And I'm still keeping it simple. I just I just want to put it in place at the moment. So pretty soon I'm going to redo this tree. So I'm going to use that to mix paint on at the moment because that's that's close by. <laughs> Easy access here. Okay, so I'll make a gray, and I'm thinking I want to make some tall tall aspen trunk sticking right up out of this meadow. So one thing I like to do is is just to save myself trouble. I'll find an area that I don't think looks that great. So like, you know, this is a good spot to put a tree trunk coming out or, or uh, covering up the background because I just don't think it looks that great. And it, you know, it's easy thing to to adjust my background and make it look as good as I want it to, but but it's even easier just to paint over it <laughs> with something in the foreground. That's what I do when I'm painting skies, you know, I put the clouds where my least favorite part of the sky is. Okay, so the size of this tree is going to be something in between this big one in the front. Let's go this way. I gotta stop right there because it's going behind my leaves. Alright, then let's put a little bit of a shadow on this right side. Now I'll definitely be pulling out the smaller brush and putting uh, some some other some other shapes on this. But maybe just not right now. Just put that coming up behind that tree somewhere. Maybe a couple branches stick out. I don't know. I better not do that with this big brush. All right, now I'll get pure white and put my bright highlights on here. Remember those diagonal lines I was talking about? Then when I get when I get down lower, you might not have all of, all of these shadows where it's not right up under the canopy. Maybe it's just more of a solid line when it gets down to there. Then a few quick strokes to blend it. Maybe not so quick. It's a big brush and a little tree. <laughs> yeah, I'll just leave that there for now. I think it would look good to have a little bit more of a shadow. Let's put just a little bit more. I like the way that looks for now. Maybe, 
Maybe another one. Maybe another one will be cool. Where can I put it? I'll put it right in between these. You know, you always got to watch out. You know, it's it's tempting to always go to the empty space. All right, so we do the black and the white. <clears throat> yeah, so the temptation is to go wherever there's no trees and put a tree, of course, right? But what I'm going to do instead is go where there's already trees and put even more. Now I'm going to make this one a little closer than the other. It'll be coming right up in behind these behind these rocks by the stream. Make that trunk wider. And bring it right down so that it's so that it's behind. Not in my small brush right now, so I can't can't get too crazy with little branches. But I can put that little gray strip on that opposite side of the shadow. Then I can take my pure white and do my my little diagonal lines. Now if there's an area that I want to look like, see this is kind of sloping toward me. So I won't put the white on the underside of it. Let's see if we can do that. Let's see if we can do that trick. I just kind of dried out my brush on the wall there. Now I'll just do a quick stroke over it. And you know what's good is, I don't know where I put my towel. I seem to have misplaced the towel, so I'll just dry the brush out on my paint table. See, I'm just pulling these in the direction that the light is going. Just trying to make them blend softly around the edge of the tree. See, with this water-based paint, you have a time limit, but that's okay because this technique needs to be done fast in order to look good. You know, it's just something that's got to be practiced. All right, cool. Oh, I might as well do a little bit on this big tree here now that we're, now that we're doing trees. Let's get some pure white. bunch on there. I always make sure I don't go too high there. I can go about that high and still be on camera.
I always have a good time with the, you know, making clean, sharp, continuous edges over my background. I, I love that when you when it's finally time to come back and clean up the edges. That's a that's a fun part of the project. Gonna need to make that tree wider. There we go. All the way to that edge. See that bright little edge? Real valuable. It does a lot for the, you know, for the three dimensional round look of the tree. Now those lines, I'll make, you know, these, these bright lines where I want it to look like the branches are showing through on a tree that's this close, I'll put a little bit of a curve to it. See like that, it's, they kind of naturally have that, that shape overall. just because if branches are coming out this way, you know, that shadow, as it comes toward me, gets further away from this, it, it causes the shadow to curve down along the edges as it wraps around to go straight across the bright spot, but then to curve down. That's what would happen if you had a branch going this way. It would be straight across on the bright spot. It would start to curve down as it went around. So I can create that look and add a lot of three-dimensional quality to my tree by making those shadows have that curve. All right, so now I'm gonna to try to just smooth those out. Nice, quick strokes. Now I might come back with the gray if I lose those shadows. Or I might just add new ones. You see, it's easy to believe when you're painting that to make shadows, you need to make them, you know, line right up with the object that's creating the shadow. That's not true. A shadow will look like a shadow because of the color that you use to make it. Regardless of whether or not there's something making that shadow it's just a matter of fine-tuning that, that color a lot of the time. Now this happens to be easy because I'm just using black and white. All right, let's do a little black on the back side of this. Now I did that on purpose where I got fatter right here because I've got a branch sticking out. So this would be a little change in the shape of the trunk. Let's blend that edge right there. And I don't want to lose that gray backlit edge. I also don't want it to be too white, so I'll keep painting over it, letting that black mix with it, but I just want to make sure that I can still see that edge. All right, now how about a little bit of black and white up here?
the smaller branches on these trees tend to be not quite as as white so I'm gonna maybe use just a little bit more black on this Let's put a tiny bit of white on that edge right here. Then these have a lot of these going on, you know, uh, a branch like this would have a black, it's almost like a seam. These trees are always kind of splitting at the seams. I need a smaller brush to do this. That's kind of the basic shape right there though. Now above eye level, remember any rings or, or uh, horizontal lines around the trunk are going to be in the shape of a frown. Below eye level, it will start to become a smile. Lots of black spots on these trees. We'll just make a few. Just to start getting the feel, I'm going to end up, I know I'm going to end up redoing so much of this, but just want to start getting the, getting the feel of it and seeing that contrast between the dark spots and the light colored bark. make that skinnier. Man, I really liked that spot. That's too bad. I just hammered that with paint. Let's put some white back in there. Put some white in here. See, this is the shadow of that big old branch coming down. Let's do something different. I got to looking at pictures of deer on my computer and so I noticed a few things. So like I said before, I like to adjust things rather than trying to do them perfect from scratch. You know, I, I just do it from memory as good as I can, the quick version. And then I come back to just do adjustments. So what I'm going to do right now is just kind of match this background color. Now working with a small brush, it's much easier to go back and forth and back and forth with different colors because it's it's not nearly as much paint in the brush. It's just, it, it takes less time to empty the brush out. So I'm gonna use this little one and do exactly that. I'm gonna go back and forth between different colors. So I noticed with 
with deer that their neck is arched more. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm cutting off the back of his neck by just remixing this, this tree shadow color or something close to it. yellow in there. Yellow doesn't cover very well. Yellow and black make that green color. There you can see I kind of cut off. He had a horse neck, you know, like, like a horse has that real broad neck by the shoulders. So I noticed that the deer, it's not that broad now. See, it's a lot easier for me to get what I can remember on the I know I keep saying this, but it's just been so valuable for me to work in this way. I get what I can remember on the surface so I don't have to think about everything all at the same time. So right now my mind is, is really focused on the difference between what I just saw and what I'm seeing here and not trying to remember the whole thing and how to do everything right. Okay, so now I'm going to bring this part of the neck out because I, I made it all skinny right there. So to make that color, I'm just going to do red, yellow, black, white, because it's brown. It's good to just remember those things, you know, you can, any brown, any brown, red, yellow, black, white. You can just remember that formula, it's just a matter of how much of each of those colors you add. All right, so now the black and white. All right, let's take, take this out and give him a mane. It's dropping down like this. And I noticed that fur pattern where it kind of flips out under the, underneath the chin there. to look real majestic so I'm gonna go ahead and give him a give him a big neck how about I add a little bit of white right in here real common fur pattern with animals to have that direction of fur right there. And then I'll put some of this light color coming down his chest, going up his shoulder, and highlight that shape. Now I'm kind of undecided on this. I might want to turn his head a little bit more toward me. I think I will. I'm going to try that out, see what it looks like. So let's cut off, cut off his nose. my yellow just make a color to cut that off with now that color doesn't match so good but that's okay I'm focusing on the deer right now let's try to focus on the uh, on the task at hand I can get a little better. Right there. Okay, so then up in here, let's make that again. Let's see, that was uh, black and yellow. I need the red and the white. brown so now I'm just making his head changing the angle a little bit which means I'll probably want to change the antlers to a little but that's okay I'm 
I want this guy to have ears. Those are going to come up. Since he's turning a little more toward me, those ears are going to be up here. Now, deer are pretty, pretty good sized ears, I noticed. that right there we'll put another one right in here <laughs> all right then I noticed some patterns okay so there's a light spot that goes kind of around the snout there's light area that kind of outlines the cheek going down to the mane. I have to put his eye in there. You know, putting an eye in will help me. Oh look, I rested my hand on the ground and put it on my background there. Oh well. Oh, now I just put my other hand on my aspen tree. Okay, an eye. Let's see, maybe like about there, maybe about here. They have very squarish eyes, like goats. Maybe right about there. And a nose, needs a nose. All right, now that light area, I wanna mix this white with the brown. Let's put here, let's let's find an area where I can mix this in a little larger amount. It's hard to do mixing on such a small area. So I'll do my mixing down here. All right, get some white. Okay, so now we have this real light tan color. Gonna use that on on his eye. See now I I looked at a lot of pictures. You know I I spent a good I spent a good half hour just looking at deer pictures, and I didn't spend that half hour studying all of the anatomy of a deer. I did not learn the anatomy of a deer in a half hour. Don't get me wrong. What I did was I compared everything I was seeing in that half hour to everything I've already memorized over the years. Just looking for anything that looked different than the way I remembered. So that way I'm always adding to my memory following that pattern, you know. And you notice, you know, when you do those kind of things, you notice that there are some, some uh, re repeating patterns that animal after animal has the same kind of, kind of pattern on it. All right, so now I'm just trying to kind of soften these markings a little bit. Put a little more white on this, in this area. I always have to remember when I'm doing these kind of things. Accuracy is not as important as believability. 
All right, let's put a highlight on the top of his head. All right, now, I can really slave over this later. Right now, I'm, I'm mostly just looking for proportions. Just trying to get, oh, I just did it again. Look at that. This is my, this is my Aspen sheet. All right, now let's redo the area that I just destroyed. Put more yellow. And another thing I noticed was a very squarish behind. And these guys, you know, something a lot more like this. Zoop. And they have that white butt. Most deer have some kind of a white, whitish patch on the back of them. So I don't know about most deer, maybe it's not most deer, but the ones that I like, the ones that I want to use. All right, let's redo that, that shadow there. Let's grab a little bit of, of black and make that pattern, you know, they have that that darker fur right there, right, and then it goes white. <laughs> okay. Let's do that. All right. He's starting to look a little bit cute. Let's put a tail on him. Okay, that's not a very good tail. <laughs> It'll do for now. <laughs> that's funny. Let's give him a, a more of a white belly. I like the white belly look. So, white in a shadow is gray, not white. So let's put gray down here to have the look of a white belly. All right, good enough for now. You know, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna call it a day right there. I can hear the family in the other room and I think it's about time I join them. As I'm looking at my image in the side of this camera, I'm noticing that I have all, the, all of the light on the trees shining from this side, but the window is right there. I, I should make it opposite, so I think, you know, when I get into further detail on that, I'm going to reverse that. Just a thought, because it would look cool, you know, you see the light on the side of my face, it would look cool if the trees matched it, so that if anybody had a picture in front of that, the natural light of the room would match the light in the mural. Comments on last week's video, Zombie Elijah Yellow says, that kid deserves a treat for being such a trooper, and <laughs> talking about Zoe holding the camera while I worked. In, in all fairness, she did have a monopod. You know, we we uh, strapped the camera to a to a broomstick, so that she she had it braced on the bed and was going like this, so that she didn't have to hold up the weight of it. So, I'm not a slave driver, but you're right. She does deserve a treat. Patricia Orozco says, when the mural is done, how do you protect it? On on a few occasions, I have put a clear protective finish on my murals. You can use a clear water-based polyurethane. I think there's a lot of different brands out there that make the water-based polyurethanes. I just don't like what they do to blacks. Any dark colors get, get you know, it, it looks like you have a, a film over them that lightens them. So oil-based clear coats preserve the, the boldness of the colors, but then oil-based clear coats will turn yellow in the sun uh, over time. So you can decide what 
uh, if, if it needs it and if, if uh, which way you want to go. I'm still open to suggestions on that actually. And uh, yes, it is also true that they don't necessarily need a clear coat because they are a finished coating. It does make them easier to wipe down and clean though. A water-based polyurethane, it's probably m more of a scrubbable finish. And I also saw your comment about painting a universe galaxies theme mural. Yes, I'm going to do that in the future. I don't know when, but I will eventually get to that. JF Jimenez says, do you do plain air painting? Because your paintings look so natural. So my question is, do you think painting outside can dramatically improve one's eye when it comes to painting in a studio? Uh, yes, but no, I don't really do plain air painting. Uh, I don't have the patience for it to go set up an easel and get the paints out and when I'm out in nature I'm usually wanting to do something more active when I'm outdoors but I do think it is valuable for that reason uh, me I just pay attention all the time to what I'm looking at so when I'm outside going on a hike with my friends I'm looking at the colors I'm studying them you know secretly they think <laughs> They they are, are probably unaware most of the time that what I'm thinking about is the way things look and the way this color affects that color and the patterns that make this look like that. Yeah, I just can't help it. So, so it's like plain air painting, I'm sure, because I'm still looking and studying. Nancy Bisogno says, if you were using regular acrylic paints, would you still use red with your yellow to make orange or would you use cad orange? I honestly am not familiar with how bright cadmium orange is in comparison with the red yellow mix. Uh, my focus is, is always on the things that, I, that I'm showing you in these videos. There's so much I don't know still about products, but uh, to answer the question, I would use whichever was brighter. If the, if the cad orange in a side-by-side -side test showed more intensity, more orange, uh, than the red yellow mix I would use whichever one had the most color because I can always uh, take the color out but you can't add color in. Ranim Hamzawi wants to know if I could do a Harry Potter themed mural so my son Joseph just so happens to want a Harry Potter themed mural in his bedroom so there's a good chance that I will no promises but there's a good chance of that. Panos Petas so it's a very nice technique my friend I see your work many years. Keep walking. Kisses from Greece. Thank you for that shout out from Greece. And thank you for the kisses. And I will indeed keep walking. Thank you for the encouragement. I appreciate it. Cesar Silva says, It's great. You're sharing all this awesome information for free, Joe. Much love and appreciation from Lisbon. Thank you very much, Cesar. Or is it Cesar? I had a friend. We call him Cesar here. Spanish. Ithamar. Smith says, hi Joe, here's a shout out from Holland. Just loving your vids and works. You're such an inspiration to watch. Keep them coming. Thank you very much, Ithamar. And once again, as I always say, I'm sorry if I didn't say your name right. I see several questions on my recent videos of what kind of paint I'm using. So that's one that I answer very frequently. And you can also go to learn.muraljoe.com slash FAQ to see uh, exactly what kind of paint that I typically use and am using on this project. It's acrylic latex wall paint. That's the short answer. So I want to thank you again for watching and I'm very much looking forward to the next post. I'll see you next time.